Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, a hobbyist blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. I've been making coils for about four years. I released a video several years ago that gave some good information on how to make them, but I've learned a little bit since then. So let's talk about basic coils and how to make them and what your options are in terms of tubing, fittings, and so forth. So, looking at your machine, I have these extra wear nuts on. They're basically the same 8mm flare. This is like an M14 uh, 1.5mm thread spacing. Um, these extras take the wear. You can get those at Metalworks. I suspect you could get them from your supplier, but uh, Metalworks is probably good. Look in the description. I'm going to refer to Metalworks several times in this video um, for your supplies. Uh, and if you're talking about the coils that come with it, I got one coil with mine. It's an 8mm coil with the standard flare nuts for 8mm. It's a workhorse. Actually works pretty nicely. This is a um, decent size for the opening. Um, it'll fit one inch square stock roughly, so you know it's a little over an inch and a half size works good for a lot of sizes, but you really need a bunch of sizes. And I've made larger and even larger and of course a bunch of smaller ones in a circular cross section with different spacing. And I've altered the number of loops based on size. Now I've mentioned before you can use about 200 to 600 millimeters, that's up to about two feet of coiling um, copper. Uh, you get too much more and you're, depending on what kind, of, what size stock you put in it, how hot the steel is, your induction heater may not be able to drive it. And you've seen that potentially if you've watched one of my other videos. Um, these are all useful for different sizes. I've got another video on why you want a good match between the size um, that you're working with and the diameter of the coil. But for a rectangular, stock, well more square, square stock, round stock that fits in these coils, the tighter the fit the better. Um, this is a decent compromise coil. It's got quite a bit of spacing. This one works quite nicely. Sometimes um, in these, if you put three-quarter stock, these were bent around half-inch inner diameter US black pipe. Um, makes for a pretty good size. It's about the smallest I ever used. Um, no, this was bent around half-inch. These slightly larger ones were bent around um, three-quarter inch inner diameter. So I started out, and I've mentioned this in another video, making these to get really precise spacing. That's a lot of work. I don't bother with this anymore. I don't bother with all of this, this stuff to get the spacing just so. That one made this, as you can see from the spacing. Um, if I'm worried about it, I will draw this pattern on it, and then I'll just freehand it. What I do is I put, for this, I put a three-quarter, because this is three-quarter inner diameter, I put a bit of three-quarter bar in my vise, stick this over here, clamp one end of the stock in with vise grips, put another pair of vise grips here for leverage to bend it, and I can wind it up uh, without having to do a big dance around the shop. The square cross sections, not so much. I just have to do the big dance around the shop. Um, so, I just have a couple different pipes I use. This one for the, it's just about one inch on the outer diameter. And this one, about three quarter inch on the outer diameter. They're uh, three quarter and half inch inner diameter black pipe. Those work pretty well, make pretty good um, pretty good coils, and you see I've made a handful of them. I keep a 
flare nut wrench, 19 millimeter flare nut wrench handy, so that I'm not hesitant to switch the coils because a coil that matches is a joy to use that matches your work. And you're just going to be happier with quick heats, good heats, even heats, so put the coil on that's going to work. Round coils like this, round cross-section coils like this are pretty easy to make. You don't need a whole lot of support. They don't tend to collapse when you bend them, uh, so you can just bend them. Set those aside. Although those are a useful size, I also get a lot of mileage out of what we'll call a rectangular cross-section. because I haven't worked super hard to get tight bends at the end. But I have a series of these, different widths, um, in both dimensions. And that's good for rectangular stock. That's also excellent for stock that you might be coiling up or getting into a shape that needs something more rectangular as you work it, especially if you're doing it some kind of shape that's long and needs to go in like that. Um, another video I've done shows that I'm making a scroll and I can use one of these larger ones and even after I've scrolled it up some I can put the scroll in here to continue to work it. That's a bit of a compromise if I really am confident that the scroll is going to go I use one of my round coils that I've set down here. It's longer and gets me a nice long heat, quick heat, strong heat, wrap it up. But if I goof then I'm either fiddling at the end of the coil or I give up and put one of these on. So sometimes I'll just start with whatever one of these I think I can fit in. You know, the smallest is the best because it's going to have the tightest fit and do the, the quickest heat. When I make the square cross-section coils, I use wood to make the mandrel. And what I tend to do is use this rasp, which happens to make a notch that fits quarter inch or six millimeter quite nicely to actually make the form here with corner support and that allows me to do a fairly tight corner and not collapse the tubing. If I do it around something like this, um, I'll cut it to the sizes I need with my bandsaw. I will put in all the grooves including a little mark on the front so that it makes it really easy on the faces to um, I do the wrapping with the advance that you want and I do the advance generally on the face and I just do straight across here and I'll burn it out. The problem with burning it out is it anneals the copper to really soft and if you really got aggressive with your fire you could actually maybe melt the copper though that's nearly 2000 degrees Fahrenheit so you're unlikely to, to do that. There is another answer though if you have, these are probably a little big but I could could rip them down to size or something like that. But if you have three pieces, clamp them together, do your filing and so on, um, then you can drive the middle piece out. And once you've driven the middle piece out, you can let these slip into the coil and there'll be enough give in the coil to just pull them out. So you can do it all without any uh, waiting for the burning. Because I usually have mine out on the barbecue and it smolders for a couple hours. Often I'll just put it in there leave it overnight, come find it in the morning. But if I need a coil for a project now, don't need to wait for that if I do the three piece trick and then just drive that middle piece out so that you can slip the other two pieces out of the coil. I used this to heat treat my draw knife. It's not super ideal but I wanted it um, to be somewhat universal. What's not super ideal is one tang of the draw knife ends up in the coil and heats up. So the quench, I actually quenched the tang, so then I have to draw temper back on that and I probably have a weak spot in the tang. Not enough I would suspect to worry about. This end of the coil is pretty tight and it just about collapsed. One thing I'll warn you about these machines, they will warn you if you don't have any water flow, they don't care if you don't have any water flow in the coil. There's no sensor in here that senses specifically water flow in the coil. So if you've blocked up the coil um, one way or another, like squeezing this off, and this didn't squeeze off but it got close, uh, and I opened it back up just a little bit by hammering the sides. 
Um, Sheen won't tell you about it, but your coil can overheat, it can uh, kind of vapor lock because the water might boil in it because there's too little water flowing through it to keep things under temperature. So watch out for that. When I am freehanding coils, I use this. This is a little bit of half inch inner diameter black pipe and I use my uh, guillotine tool um, you, or maybe I made a spring, little tiny spring fuller out of uh, some quarter inch stock. This is set for six millimeter slash quarter inch because that's almost exactly the same thing. And I did two sides of it. So this one's all the way around and it, that groove really supports the tubing so it won't collapse on you. And then I cut a bunch off so that I can do some tight corners. I was going to make one of these and that would allow me to do pretty tight corners here, but I bought this one from Metalworks. We'll come back and talk about this one a little bit more when I talk about options on how to make them. Let's talk a little bit, I mean options on tubing, which is our next topic. What kind of tubing and fittings do you want to use? Well, it's complicated. Depends on where you are. So most of this conversation is going to be for people in the U.S. where the eight millimeter flare nuts are you can't find them in any hardware store not even in a specialty refrigeration tubing supply well not refrigeration tubing supply but a a uh, more specialized um, plumbing or whatever supply that would supply various types of copper tubing they're not likely to have any metric sizes what i like to do because that's where i started and this applies pretty well if you have easy access to metric, is I started with just making 8mm tubing. This is some um, 6mm. No, this is, sorry, this is some 6mm and this is some 8mm. I generally like to flare one end, make a stub, or I bought some stubs, as I mentioned in other ones, pre-made. Um, and once you've cleaned out this cut, which tends to collapse a little bit from, from the cutter, these will sleeve together pretty nicely. Um, it's a very effective combination. This makes for a somewhat tighter coil. It still lets enough water through. So eight millimeter, good enough to make coils by itself. Tighter coils with smaller spacing, like, you know, my, my smaller ones. Um, like the six millimeter works reasonably well but you're going to have to order it get it shipped overseas um, and you know I have my supply of, of flare nuts I've run out of the pre-made stubs I'll just make my own from here it's not really worth it and this eight millimeter is going to make a lot of stubs so that's what I'm going to do now what am I going to do after I run out of that well what I'm actually going to do is use this flaring tool, stretching tool really. You can stretch your tubing. It's kind of designed so that you make tubing stretch so that you can connect tubing, you can sleeve tubing into itself. Well, that'll make it pretty easy for me to take eight millimeter and stretch it enough for quarter inch to fit in. And I have a whole spool of quarter inch just waiting to become coils. And I can grab this at my local big box hardware store. That's where I'm going. And by the way, having one of these little small things is pretty handy. So this is my tubing cutter, small size. You know, if I have a situation like this where they're next to each other and I still need to cut for some reason, I can still get around. Or if I've looped the coil back and I'm trying to cut off the end, which is normal, right? I have one end that I've cut, then I'm gonna cut the other end after I've wrapped it up because I didn't wanna waste any. Well, this will fit between the two leads and I'll be able to cut it off. This stuff, the insulation, I never use it. I get too tired of it turning into sticky glassy melt stuff on my coils. It's good for some purposes, but when you're hitting high heats, bump the coil, it melts right on your metal, right onto the coil. It's just not worth the mess. So that's what I do and what I plan to do. But if you're starting out, 
and you don't have a stock of eight millimeter stuff, what do you do? Couple different answers. Back in the day, someone was selling these. Now they look like the wear things here, but nope, this is the M14 and the standard threading, whatever it is, for the quarter inch flare. And then I can just get quarter inch flare nuts at my local hardware store. If I were starting from scratch, and I could get these. That's exactly what I do. I make all my coils that way. I don't want to have to put these on just to change coils, so I've not done that. And I probably won't. But it's a good option. I haven't been able to find these anywhere anymore. The guy who made them or found them, selling them on eBay, doesn't sell them. Hasn't sold them for years. You can get yourself 8mm flare nut, um, some 8mm or we'll talk about it in a minute, 5 sixteenths, and then sleeve in some quarter with a stretcher or if you're eight millimeter or six millimeter, but probably quarter because you can get the fittings for that. And then you can put a, a double coupling, a compression coupling, and then you could have a make your own adapters. Pretty good. They'll work fairly well, not quite as nice as a, a one piece adapter, but that's a decent choice. Then you can use quarter. And you pretty much use quarter for anything. That's a pretty good choice. The other choice is to do 5 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths is not as good a match for 6 millimeter as quarter is. Quarter is just proud of the 6 millimeter, but that's what Metalworks does. So this is actually 5 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths. I kind of feel like 3 16 is just a little bit small, which is why I haven't adopted 5 16 and 3 16 but it works fine. And this coil takes a lot of heat, it took so much heat in fact that it, it basically disintegrated the uh, insulator, uh, though Metalworks shipped me a bunch of spare insulators, so I'm good. I'll glue another one on at some point, I'll peel this entirely off, and it's just silicon down there. Um, that's a decent option. 5 sixteenths here, just use your flaring. 5 sixteenths is close enough. I've always used a 5 sixteenths uh, flaring tool spot. I mean, I have a multi-size imperial flaring tool, and I just use the 5 sixteenths slot to do my flaring for the 8 millimeter tubing. Works just fine. So 5 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths is a good option. You can get the flare nuts. At Metalworks, you can get these wear adapters at Metalworks. You can also obviously get this coil, and I've shown the, the flex leads as well. They're also interesting. Um, and Metalworks is kind of supporting our hobby, if you will, or profession, if it's your profession. Um, so I don't mind throwing them some business, uh, my own, or recommending them. I have no actual affiliation with them. So there you go. A good set of options on making coils, um, even some discussion about some more advanced coil making. I'm going to talk about some different and odder coil shapes in future videos to give you some ideas for uh, increasing the versatility of your machine. But in the meantime, forge on and make beautiful things.